Okay, what's going on, guys? And welcome to a brand new episode of Energize, brought to you by Forge Liar Stout. Ross, you big dosser. Introduce the guest, man. Today we are bringing you a light heavyweight clash for the Celtic title. We have Emma Brennan and Jamie Marcy. The lads will square off at Katie Taylor Chantel Cameron too in the three arena. It is going to be an absolute banger of fight, and we have the lads on here to talk about it. Uh, Emma, we'll start with yourself. Uh, obviously, there was a bit of frustrations early on in your pro career and even up to recent dates where you've had fights cancelled. How good is it to get on one of the biggest cards of the year? Yeah, so we only had one fight cancelled. That was in mm. September. Um, for me personally, we had an idea that this fight was happening. So my manager, he's got connections with Matchroom and the zone. So I knew he was walking in the background. Look, it's very easy to get disappointed when when fights do get cancelled, but that's part and par- parcel mm. of the game. It's going to happen. It's already happened early on in the career. I'm sure it will happen again. But yeah, I I sort of knew that this was materialising in the background, so it was very easy to stay focused when you have a show as big as this, the possibility of fighting in your hometown on Kate Taylor's undercard. Um, yeah, very, very easy to stay motivated and stay in the gym. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely a big night. It's probably the biggest night of the year for us boxing. Uh, Jamie, what about yourself? How good does it be on such a large stage for this one? Yeah, it's amazing, man. What an opportunity. Um, and look, it's uh, it's it's far from my first main event. I've had, I'd say, 10 main events at this point in uh, our Class 2 sports, but there's nothing that quite um, equals the calibre of this event. You know what I mean? So... It's uh, it's beautiful. There's a lot of hard work, and by the grace of God, we're here now, and uh, what an opportunity. Yeah, for the people tuning in now, it's going to go down in the Tree Arena on November the 25th. Make sure to get on to Emmett, and make sure to get on to Jamie for tickets, because it's going to be an unmissable night, Ross. Yeah, it absolutely will be. Um, Emmett, obviously, yeah, Jamie has six pro fights in the boxing ring uh, under the belt, so he's the more expensive on the pro team, but do you feel like your, uh, your amateur career and your Olympic experience will stand to you in this fight? Yeah, look, it's a fight is a fight. Um, obviously, he has a lot more experience in pro. He's gone eight rounds, he's gone ten rounds. And we're well aware of that. So, in terms of his sparring, like every spar I do now is with two sparring partners. They're putting her on me. They're putting her on me for four rounds each. Um, because we're aware he does have the experience. I think he does lack a little bit in experience in the sport in total. I, th- I know he was, comes from a Muay Thai background and He's had the crossing over in the last few years. So, in total, I have a lot more experience in the sport. But, um, not overlooking Jamie by any means. Um, he's, got, he's got the experience doing eight rounds with Cronin. He's got the experience doing ten rounds in, with Cronin. Both fights were wars. And he had to dig deep in both fights. So, he's got the experience over them eight rounds. Um, I'm well aware of that. And then, uh, Jamie, obviously yourself on that, do, do you feel like going those longer longer rounds, going going the 10 rounds, going the 8 rounds, do you feel like that play into your favour? Well, of course it will stand to me. You know what I mean? Of mm. course that will stand to me. There were two wars and you have to dig deep. Their main events are a lot in the line. But I can't take away from Emmett's amateur uh, pedigree either. You know what I mean? I know mm. that uh, coming into the sport late and uh, switching over like I did, I'm our own top amateur boxers. Um, and, and top pros that were amateur boxers I'm, a, I'm around with them on a regular basis and I know what comes with being a top amateur and being in the gym since a child and having those fundamentals down so I have respect for that also um, it's a good clash in that sense we're talking a seasoned amateur and a new pro against and you're like I'm, I'm I'm relatively new in the sport also I've only six pro fights but I'm a seasoned pro across Muay Thai also I've a, a number of main events over there so, uh, yeah, it's a good clash of styles in that sense. I have respect for what an amateur uh, pedigree brings, uh, but I know I'm a seasoned pro, and um, it's going to be a good clash in that sense, no doubt. Yeah, lads, like a lot of people, there's been talk about it in the boxing scene that people try to pad the records, get up to 20 and 0, but like you lads are going head to head right now, and like it's going to be a fight not to be missed. Was there, was there any like thought that maybe you shouldn't take this fight in any sort of way, Emmett? No, geez. we we went looking for it. So as I said, Darren, 
is my manager. He's the one that put the fight to match around. They obviously said yes to it straight away because there is a good fight. You have a lad there that's five and one. I'm one and oh. Both of us are willing to put our own beating record on the line straight away. You don't get that in boxing. That's part of the reason why we went for Jamie. Although it might seem like a dis- I disrespect him a small bottom line, I respect what he does and where he comes from. I respect his mindset. Look, on paper, I'm a lot better of a fighter than Jamie. So he has a lot to lose here at five wins and one loss. He's also Celtic champion. He has a lot to lose. But that's the fight that we knew makes more makes the most sense if you're going to match him. You want the fight that people can get behind. And look, he was a sort of building this up, so mm-hmm. people are getting behind it. Jamie's not afraid to talk either. He's not afraid to back her up. And he's not afraid to stand in the middle of the ring. So in terms of when we went looking to match him for a fight that we thought was going to get us on the Katie Taylor card, this was the exact fight because you're going to get two lads that are going to come toe-to-toe. They're not going to show you away from each other in the fight. Not going to show you away from each other in the build-up. And that's what it's all about. It's, pro- it's professional boxing now. It's about building a fight, building a bit of a profile and getting the most out of this card that you can. Because before you know it, um, this show is over. You want to have gained the most that you can out of the card. And look, exactly. Jamie's the perfect dance partner for that. Yeah, Jamie, when you heard that Emmett wanted to take you on in Dublin, uh, Dublin's Tree Arena, like what, what sort of, what, 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 like, what were the thoughts on that? Oh, my thoughts on that was excitement, man. It was excitement. Like Emmett's talking about, I have a lot to lose. He certainly has a lot to lose in his hometown, coming from an Olympic ba- uh, background. Like it's a, like it's what, like he would describe uh, a lesser experienced guy. So he has a lot to lose also. Am I surprised? It takes a certain of a breed of a man to, to, to get to the Olympics and to be a fighter full stop. I'm not surprised at all. I, I, I imagine he's a ballsy type character as I am myself. Uh, so I wasn't surprised he came looking for the fight. I believe that like Emmett uh, has high expectations of himself and wants to progress in the game quickly. Emmett's, uh, I believe in his 30s now at this point, he wants to progress quick. I'm the guy in the division that no one has a win over me. I have two titles at super middleweight and light heavyweight. So if he wants to progress quick, I'm the name to go after. Um, I have respect for him going after me so quick, but he talks a big game and respect for him for uh, going attempting to back it up. No, I'm not surprised at all. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm excited. I'm very much excited. I'm very excited as well now, lads. Not gonna lie, Ross. So are yeah. you, man? Yeah, it feels like there's a lot on the line here. Obviously, there's the Celtic light heavyweight title itself, and then obviously um, there's a bit of bragging rights on the line as well. Well, is the thing that probably most on the line is putting your name forward and uh, put on a big show in front of Eddie Hearn and the matchroom crowd. Because uh, exactly. obviously, the amount of shows that they put on a year, they're a great staple of fighters to be in there with. Uh, start yourself, Emma. Yeah, the reward for the winner here is unthinkable. Um, as you said, you have to take chances to get this reward. It's very, very easy to go about your career, padding it, fighting no one, trying to get the 10, 11, 12 and 0, and then trying to get on a big show like this, and then you lose and you're never, see, you're never seen again. But here you have two lads starting out their career, willing to put everything on the line. Yeah. So it's about putting on a good fight. It's about... For the winner, it's about Eddie Hearn saying, right, I want to give him a chance again. But what I believe this fight is going to do, I've seen Jamie fight and he is a warrior. He comes from a Muay Thai background. I'm inspiring at the moment Muay Thai fighters are ex-Muay Thai fighters that's gone into MMA. The warriors, they fight fire with fire. They stand in the middle. If they get hit, they come straight back. It's what they do. It's built into them. So I have no doubt that this fight, at some stage, is going to end up in the middle of the ring with the two of us toe to toe. So whatever happens after this, there's going to be people talking about this fight. And that's the exact reason why we went for Jamie. One, he has the title, but two, he's going to meet me in the centre at some stage. At some stage, whether it's in the fourth, second, third, eighth round, we're going to meet in the middle at some stage and it's going to be a toe to toe walk. Jamie, would you agree it's going to be toe to toe? It has the makers of that. Who knows where the fight is going to end up? Um, and it's a pressure guy. Uh, we can both fight in a in a variety of ways. It's an eight round fight. At some point, we're going to end up exchanging for sure. You know what I mean? There's a, it's not going to be a jab war, no. Have you lads ever come across each other as well, just at at, at events? Yeah, yeah, we chatted. Must be six to eight months ago. And again, there's respect there between us. We went up, we talked to each other. We said this fight has to happen. 
we tried to get the fight in September. Jamie's team said no, and they had the right reason to say no. Jamie was away on holidays. It ended up being the perfect move for them. We could have fought, and if that show had gone ahead in September, mm. on, let's be 100% honest, the show, it's not the same calibre as the show of Katie Taylor's undercard. So we could have fought in September and not getting the same recognition as what we're going to get now. So in terms of Jamie and his management team, they played a blinder. We're not accepting that fight for September. Yeah, look, yeah, look what's after Jamie happening now. Like, team. Yeah, look what's after happening now. Like this, this event is going to be huge. Like obviously, last time out, like Katie lost, and like like she's coming back to try and avenge loss in the three arena. That's why, and there's going to be loads of other big fights on the card as well. But that's why when we saw this fight was announced. It was like, geez, both lads are going for it. Like at such a early part of their professional career, it's great to have you both on. Ross, like this one is definitely not to be missed. De de definitely not. Um, obviously, uh, Emma, this is only down the road from you. Uh, you're, you're you're local enough to the three arena. Do you feel uh, any added pressure by having maybe more friends and family at the event, or is that something you thrive on? Look, not really. Once that bell goes, all that added noise and all the support that's there for you. It's me against Jamie. It's one on one. They can't help me. They can cheer me on and scream and do what they want, but. Unless you have the minerals yourself to deal with that pressure, um, it means absolutely nothing. It means nothing. Now, I'm 100% confident that once that bell goes, I do. I have the minerals. I have the balls to grab the line. This is why we took her as well. We we fully believe that we can win this fight in style. Um, mm. As I said, at some stage, both was well meet in the centre. Jamie just said it there. It's not going to be a jabbing war. It's not either of our styles. Him coming from my toy, my boxing style of going forward. So we're going to meet at some stage, whether it's in the centre of the ring or not. And I believe that I'm going to be too strong and too experienced for him. Mm. Uh, and then, Jamie, um, what do you see? What do you think when you see the likes of uh, Emma training with the likes of uh, Keen Cowley uh, training with the Muay Thai fighters in preparation for yourself? What do you make of that? I think it's good, man. I think it's good. Uh, I know Keen. Keen's a sound skill. Um, I don't, I don't know much about keen boxing. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I don't think I'm a, I'm not, I'm not a Muay Thai fighter no more. Nor am I an MMA fighter. So I'm happy to see him sparring with those guys and expecting a, an upright, uh, rigid type uh, fighting style. Uh, it's good. Look, I've nothing bad to say about those guys. Keen is doing very well in MMA now. A good, a good skin. Um, running a very successful gym. And power to him, respect to him. I don't know much about the other fella. I seen a picture there the other day. Look, all the chat, all the sparring, it's going to come down to fight now, whatever. Um, the two men are going to fight, both back themselves, I 100% back myself. I'm here to win. Every fight I've come to, I'm here to win. I have an opportunity of my lifetime. I've been in the trenches for what seems like, I only started fighting at 22. I went to the kickboxing gym at 22. Um, a few years later, I'm fighting on the Katie Taylor undercard. It's been war after war after war, main events, Limericks, win wins and losses. Titans now in a pro boxing game. I'm here to win, man. This is the opportunity I have to change my life. Um, I respect Emmett coming to, uh, I am like whether he wants to admit it or not, I am a dangerous fight, I have balls, I'm long, I'm awkward, I'm brave and I'm coming to win this fight, simple as. Um, and I agree with Emmett in terms of pressure, it being in the heart of Dublin, all his fans, whatever, once the bell rings it's just me and him. I believe he's coming to win, win. I respect him coming uh, looking for this fight on his second fight, he obviously backs himself. I back myself 100% and I'm coming to win this fight. All the sparring, all the chat, uh, there's not a whole lot to it. It's two men that back themselves are going to have war uh, in a few weeks. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, absolutely. Look, there's been... Yeah, yes, it will be. There's been great days for uh, Limerick up in Dublin recently with the, with the hurling. Great days for uh, for the dubs with the, with the guy. Now we have uh, Dublin versus uh, Limerick uh, going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the three arena. Um Emma, I'll ask yourself this question first, and then I'll get yourself to uh, chime in, Jamie. Uh, obviously, this isn't two Irish fighters fighting on the biggest card of the year in the three arena. Do you feel like because it's two Irish fighters fighting on them, there'll be more eyes on this one than many other fights on the card? Yeah, 100%. Two Irish lads, as we said, willing to put it all on the line. We talked about it earlier on the show. Mm. Not many people actually have that in their, in their mindset. So people will talk about, oh yeah, I'll fight this person, I'll fight that person. When push comes to shove, they go the easier route. Here you have two lads willing to put their, their unbeaten uh, unbeaten record on the line, fight each other for a Celtic title. 
I believe this is going to have massive eyes on it. Um, and in terms of match room, they will make a very big mistake if they put this fight on very early in the night. This could possibly, the build up of this fight could end up being forced on the main card or last on the prelims. It would be a massive mistake for match room to put an all his clash where, as we said, we're going to meet in the middle of some states. It's going to be a war. It's going to be push and shove. We are going to go to war with each other. It would be a massive, massive mistake for Matrim to have us early on when there's not many Irish people there because a lot of a lot of Irish people are talking about this fight. Two Irish lads fighting, ready to go toe to toe. Um, so yeah, if I was even looking at this from the outside with no bias towards it, Matrim, I'm saying right, get this fight on near enough prime time. Open the sh- open the main card with our last of the prelims. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think so as well. I think, uh, look, we didn't ask his own for nothing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. the, the interest is definitely going to build in this one, and I think this is definitely one to look at. Uh, Jamie, do you have a similar sentiment? 100%. He spoke well there, man. This is probably the sauciest fight on the, one of the sauciest on the card, by the main event. Two fellas coming to win with very contrasting stories. Limerick and Dublin, probably the two staunchest counties in the country. Um, it's going to be good, man. Do you know what I mean? There's a story to this. Two clashes of styles. I'm bringing people up with me. It's in his back garden. Um, and we're both legitimately coming to win. This is a ballsy man taking a fight like this in his second fight. I took an unbeaten fight on my second fight. And I've been taking I've been taking a risky fights from the get-go. Um, I'm coming to win, man. I put I put a lot into this. Um, and here I am with my opportunity. Uh, there's a lot in the line from his perspective as well. This fight is the one to watch. And it needs to be on the main card. Yeah, well, the, like last time out, the tree arena was basically packed from the get go. But like, I 100 percent agree. This should not be the curtain jerker. This is one now that people are going to keep an eye on. They're going to be like, "What? There's two Irish lads taking on each other, putting all on the line." Like that's why, as we said earlier, we were like, "Look, we have to get these two lads on." And like, like, let's get this show on the road, Ross. Yeah, and as you said there, Jamie's going to be bringing his own people up. We have a mm. lot of people coming to this fight. If this fight is toe to toe, it's back and forth. You're not going to have a boyish crowd just shouting at the one person. It's back yeah. and forth in the crowd as well. Yeah. A lot, a lot of noise coming from the crowd. The atmosphere for this fight alone is going to be unbelievable. It would be very, very stupid to have this on in early in the prelims. Yeah, I have to think the exact same thing. Like there, there are, There's obviously people who... Uh, who... Irish boxing fans are dying to see, like the likes of Thomas Carty, like the likes of Gary Coley looking for a bit of redemption. But again, like they're one sided on a crowd point of view. This one's going to yeah. have that back and forth. This one's going to have people from both sides. And look, the Irish audience generally are intelligent enough boxing fans. They can tell what's going on in the ring and they, they're, they're going to love this one. This is a mouth watering clash for the Celtic Light Heavyweight title. It is M. Brennan versus Jane Marty. It is one that just cannot be missed. And we need to see it later on in the night. We want us to, we want this one to be the one that ignites the crowd for the last couple of fights. This is the, this is gonna be the one that is gonna have people on the edge of the seats, and this is the one that we can't wait to see. So I'm gonna ask one final question to both of you guys. Start with yourself, Emma. Emma, how do you get the job done come fight night? I've said it before, I'm very confident I can get this done in four rounds. Very, very confident. Um, we've looked at Jamie, we looked at what he's good at, what he's bad at. As I said, eventually we're gonna we're gonna meet in the centre of the ring at some stage. We're gonna go toe to toe. I just think my experience, my defensive skills, is gonna be too much for him. Don't get it wrong, we are building for an eight round war. If it goes to that, it's gonna go to that. But I am confident I can get it done in four. And Jamie? Multiple ways I can win this. Um, honestly, I believe there's a couple of ways I can win this. Win this a few ways, uh, but tune in fight night. All the predictions, all the chat. Um, it's all nonsense. Two men are going to meet in the middle of the ring and fight. I've proven I come to fight. He's obviously backing himself, fighting words from himself there. Um, but I'm sure Eddie's uh, Eddie's familiar with uh, Emmett. Uh, based on Darren being his manager and whatnot and his, uh, his amateur experience. Probably not too familiar with me. Um, all the talk and stuff is nonsense. Uh, tag Eddie Hearn up in this. Let's get a narrative going. I'm not going to engage and chat too much. It's not exactly who I am. I'm a, I'm a proven warrior. I'll come to fight. I'll do my, fo- uh, my talking with my fist come fight night. Uh, but get this fight on the main card. Uh, predictions, 
yeah, I'm not into all that stuff, but I'm coming to win simple as, and there's a, there's many ways I can do it. I can keep it long, or if he's not going to respect my range, I can hurt him coming in. I'm very confident to that as well. So, um, yeah, tune in, boys. It's, that's exactly what I want to hear. Exactly <laughs> what I want to hear. No, but he's confident. I want the best Jamie mm-hmm. Morrissey on November 25th. I want the man that's well prepared. That's exactly what I want. I'm not underestimating him. The training that I'm doing is... It's second to none. There's not a hope in hell that I'm underestimating them. We're both going to be ready. This is going to be unbelievable. I am, I'm buzzing by this. The winners, yeah, are be, the winners are going to be the Irish fans, lads. That's 100% the, the facts. <laughs> 100%. Uh, November 25th, Emma takes on Jamie. Not to be missed. Ross, take us away, bud. Guys, thanks a million for uh, for coming uh, coming on and uh, doing this. Really appreciate it. Can't wait to see who walks out with that uh, Celtic Light heavyweight strap come fight night. Um, make sure to check it out. Uh, Chantel Cameron versus Kate Taylor 2. Brought to you by Forge Irish Stout and Matchroom Boxing. It is one not to be missed. If you are watching at home, make sure to like, share, subscribe. And as always, stay, stay energized. energized. Energize show up the Irish. And sussing you guys a couple of times, I've seen a couple of clips, I think you've done some interviews with Dylan Moran and that, but I, I, I saw, so keep going, keep up the good work guys.